Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Culp for JudgingPro.com. In this discussion, we're going to focus on marketing systems of beef cattle. Marketing on a weight basis, quality grades, and yield grades. The first system that I referenced earlier is marketing on a weight system. That one's pretty straightforward. We can either sell them on a live weight basis or on a carcass weight basis. Carcass weights, obviously dressing percentages, then have an influence on, but for the most part, whenever you're marketing on a weight basis, it's bigger is better. Now, on occasion, there are top end weight limits, so you'll wanna kinda of keep those in check. The other two systems, quality grades and yield grades, are a bit more complex. Within quality grades, we're gonna narrow that down into two basic categories, marbling and maturity. Maturity, we don't get too focused on as we're judging market cattle. And that's because maturity falls into several different categories, A maturity being the best, and A maturity is reserved for cattle that are 30 months of age or younger. So we don't focus on it too much from a judging contest standpoint because nearly all the market cattle that we judge are gonna be under 30 months of age, and so they should all be A maturity. Marbling is the fat that's inside of a muscle. So we call that intramuscular fat. So if you go to the store and you're trying to buy steaks and you see those little flecks of fat that are interspersed amongst the, the meat tissue, that would be marbling. Marbling really helps to keep juiciness and flavor within meat products as we cook them. So we generally think about that as influencing the quality eating experience, which is why we say that it's a quality grade measure. In relation to marbling, we don't really have a very good measure to estimate that whenever we judge cattle live. Why? Because marbling is inside the muscle, like I said earlier, and we don't have x-ray vision. So what we do to try and estimate marbling is we try to look and see if an animal looks like they've been on feed for a long enough period of time to have maximized their potential to marble. The way we look at that is we look at some fat indicators. Keep in mind, animals fatten from front to rear and from top to bottom. A well-finished market animal will have some fill through their brisket. They'll have little pockets of fat right up around their tail head, we call that pone fat or tail head fat, and then down through their flank. It should be fairly deep and soft, and it should be pretty uniform in terms of their body depth. When those fat indicators are full, that means that those cattle have likely been on feed long enough to have maximized their quality grade potential. From a yield grade perspective, we have to be careful to not let those animals get too fat as we're trying to maximize their quality grades. And that's because yield is directly related to carcass yield. That's how we came up with the term of a yield grade. And that's basically a muscle to fat ratio. Yield grades are on a numerical system with one being the best and five being the poorest. I.e. a one has very little fat and a lot of muscle. Whereas a five has a lot of fat and very little muscle. Generally, we look at getting cattle at a yield grade between two and three. And that's because when they've been fed to a back fat thickness of a four to a five tenths, those cattle begin with a preliminary yield grade of three. That's where muscle has a big influence, is because then muscle can come in and actually drive the yield grade down. But remember, muscle isn't just a snapshot of the measurement of the ribeye, it's actually how much muscle they have in relationship to their carcass weight. So for instance, if we have a Holstein steer that weighs 1,500 pounds and he cuts a 12 inch ribeye, versus say maybe an Angus steer who weighs 1,200 pounds and also has a 12 inch ribeye, the Angus steer is actually heavier muscled, even though whenever we look at the ribeye measurement, it's basically the same. We look for muscle in cattle in the same areas we look in all the other species. One of the good areas to begin with is to look right directly behind their shoulder. That's where their rib starts. And I say rib, and this time I'm referring to the beef cut, the rib, which is basically in the same area that we would look for a rack in market lambs. The area from the back side of their shoulder to their last rib. From the last rib back to the hook bone is the loin, just like in market lambs. So you might hear somebody reference the rib and loin, and what they're referring to then is the muscle down the top side of a, of a beef animal's skeleton, the longissimus dorsi. From behind is also a great indicator. We want to study the width of their pins, we want that to be pretty wide, and actually if we can pick up where their hook bone is and take that back to their pins, we want that to be fairly uniform 
We don't want it to taper too bad because when animals taper, of course that gives us less surface area for the animal to lay on muscle. So those ones that are stouter in their pin set, you might hear people say that they're stouter hipped, they generally have more muscle as well. Of course then, we look at the shape of the quarter. We want that to be a deep tying quarter that has some bulge and some flair to it all the way down to the base. Just like in other species, animals that are wide from behind and look muscular down their top certainly do have a lot of muscle. So we briefly described marketing on a weight basis and then some of the factors that are involved in quality grades and yield grades. The thing people often get confused is, quality grades and yield grades are kind of inversely correlated. What I mean by this is, as an animal gets fatter, we tend to think that their quality grade goes up, but that also drives their yield grade into a less desirable figure. So we gotta be looking for an optimal amount of fat, and of course, more muscle is generally better.